Hi, I'm Ben Supnik. I'm one of the XPoint developers, and in this video, I'm going to explain prefill. Prefill is an optimization you can put into your airplanes that makes a huge difference to XPlane's frame rate when there are clouds. So, first of all, let's take a look at this scenario, which I've set up to demonstrate prefill. We're in the cockpit of the default uh, Avanti P180 and I have set a lot of clouds. I've set three layers, and I've also set the uh, cloud density rendering settings very high. Uh, bear with me, because we are recording video, and so the frame rates are all going to be much lower than they normally would be uh, if we weren't recording. So what you can see here is that this middle bar of the uh, Avanti cockpit is blocking some of the clouds. A cloud drawing is very expensive for the GPU, and the amount of time it takes to draw clouds is a function not only of the cloud complexity, but how much space on the screen is actually getting filled in. So in this case, we're paying for all this area up here. But what about the area behind the bar? That's wasted space, right? There's no point in drawing clouds because you can't see them. Well, it turns out that X-Plane knows that. And if we take a look at what's really being drawn, what you can see is the X-Plane has actually skipped drawing the clouds between behind the bar. It has also skipped drawing the runway behind the cockpit. This is prefill. This blue outline you see where the panel is missing, that is the prefilled area where the interior of your airplane has blocked 3D drawing saving frame rate. So that's prefill for you. Now, there are two data refs I'm going to use that you can use uh, by going to data ref editor, plugins, data ref editor, show art controls, and then you can filter for uh, prefill. And there are two data refs. One is test prefill, which is what I just showed you. When you turn on test prefill, we stop drawing the cockpit so you can see how much of the 3D scene was drawn and which areas were omitted. These areas with no clouds and runway, that's a saving. So that's how you know prefill is working. And the second data ref is kill prefill. And when you turn this on, we stop prefilling. So when kill prefill is on, we draw everything. In this case, pre uh, killing prefill is on. We're drawing clouds behind the panel, even though it's a total waste. Let's see if we can see any frame rate change. Uh, very little. It's because of the video recording. Anyway, so this is a 2D cockpit. The good news for you is that if you're using a 2D panel, uh, you have to do nothing. Prefill is automatic for 2D panels. You don't have to do a thing. x just understands that, hey, 2D panel, don't draw any clouds behind it. Now, the situation is a little bit more complicated for 3D. Now we're in a 3D panel, and there's just as much opportunity to save work. So here we are in the 3D panel, and look at that. We are saving all this space behind the panel. Same data ref, test prefill. Let me get a little bit of clouds in there so you can see. Look at all that savings. In the case of the 3D cockpit, you have to tell X-Plane which part of your airplane to use to block the, the clouds. So let's go to Plane Maker. There's a checkbox in the MISC object screen called Prefill. And when you check Prefill, uh, X-Plane will use that object to block the clouds. And in the case of the Avanti, we've only used one object, cockpit shell. We've checked it for prefill, and that is why the cockpit shell shape is blocking out these clouds. Now, if you look down below the cockpit shell, you'll see that this area at the bottom is not prefilled. That's because it's not part of the cockpit object. It's part of the, pa uh, excuse me, it's not part of the cockpit shell object that was checked as part of some other object. You don't have to prefill, and you don't have to prefill with every object. You should prefill with objects that will block a large amount of your cockpit view, because that's where you're going to get the savings, right? So the cockpit shell blocks off all the clouds above the windows, below the windows, to the sides. That's a good choice. Um, here's what you want to do. You want to prefill objects that will block a lot of area. You want to prefill objects that are visible from the cockpit. You do not want to prefill with objects that are expensive to draw with a huge number of animations. You don't want to prefill objects with a large number of small triangles. You don't want to prefill objects that are translucent. Uh, remember, every object that's prefilled is actually drawn twice once for the prefill operation and once for the actual airplane. So, 
Use prefill judiciously on the few objects that will block as much area, but don't just prefill everything. So let's see if we can actually see the frame rate difference with this uh, 3D cockpit object. So we're running at about 10 FIPS. And we fall down to about 9. Um, with the video recording, unfortunately, the actual frame rate difference is not visible. Uh, in this airplane, in this configuration, prefill uh, saves 10 FIPS. In other words, without video recording, in this very view, you'd be at 24 FIPS. Uh, this is on a uh, Retina MacBook Pro running full screen at uh, 1440 by 900. And we'd be at 24 FIPS. Without prefill, we'd be at 16 FIPS. So prefill is a big deal. It can be a 50% or better uh, change in your frame rate. So it is absolutely important that if you make a 3D virtual cockpit, check the prefill box on the right area, and then use test prefill to make sure that you're blocking the right area, and use kill prefill to see what kind of frame rate boost you get. There we go again. We're down to 9, 10 FIPS. Now we're back up to uh, 10, 11. All right, that is cockpit prefill, and uh, the cockpit prefill button is also documented on uh, the developer website. There is a uh, article on it, and uh, just one last thing to show you: this more info button at the bottom of the MISC objects screen. This actually goes to the uh, web page that explains all of these checkboxes, uh, because there are now a lot of options for the checkboxes in Plane Maker, uh, and you can read about every one of them by clicking that link. All right, thank you.